Well, hello everybody and welcome to Greater Nevada Field for a very special production. Alongside Nikki Pika, I'm Mike Stephenson and this is the season's first installment of Aces All In. Baseball is back in the biggest little city and NSN has you covered. Season number 15 for Reno's Ball Club is underway and we've got a whole lot on deck, including an exclusive chat with the third year skipper Blake Lawley as the Aces aim to return to the Pacific Coast League playoffs. Plus, we sit down with one of Lolly's trusted staff members charged with keeping Reno's bats bumping. It is hitting coach Travis Denker now in his second season with Reno. And how about blending America's pastime with man's best friend? In 2024, the Ace is welcoming a new four-legged teammate. We'll introduce you to Lambo, the team's bat dog. That and a whole lot more is coming up. In the meantime, of course, they love living and playing in Northern Nevada, but each and every Reno Aces player has the dream and goal of joining the big league squad down in Arizona. The Aces opening day roster featuring a bunch of guys who have achieved said dream, including a few who are a part of the Diamondbacks dream run to the 2023 World Series. This includes Andrew Salfrank, who has had to overcome plenty en route to pitching on the game's biggest stage. Our Zach Larson has more with the talented Southpaw as he returns to Reno. From pitching in Reno to being a crucial piece in the World Series. Backhand stab for Domo. Walker able to get there. After the first game, it's like, wow, that really happened. You know, like as a kid, that's everything you dream of is first to play professional baseball and then, you know, obviously to make your, you know, make it to the big leagues and, and then to, to play in the World Series was, was insane. The rise of Andrew Saul Frank is impressive. In June 2023, the Reno Aces calling up the Fort Wayne, Indiana native after just 34 starts in AA. Then, just a month out from the postseason, Saul Frank making his major league debut for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Playing in a miss, Andrew Saul Frank, his first major league strikeout, and it comes with that signature curveball. My biggest dream as a kid was to play professional baseball, um, but to actually make it, I think. Is, is probably the biggest one for that moment last year to kind of come to to come to the forefront and, and it happened. Uh, it was a super surreal moment, and it was a dream start to his big league career. In his first 10 games, Salfrink allowing zero runs in 10 innings of work, pitching in high leverage situations in the postseason. We would not have gone to the World Series without him. So, just tried to remind him that he was going to he was going to be needed, and he was. In, in further games and um, just a reason that we, you know, we're National League champions. D-backs closer Paul Sewald proving to be one of the veterans helping the 26-year-old as he dealt with the highs and lows of October baseball. That ball's hit well. Both outfielders on the run and this is going to get down. Sewald was was a guy that kind of found me in the tubs after the one of the one of the games and was like, hey man, like we're going to need you, you know, like don't get down on yourself. like. And he gave me a couple personal stories, you know, kind of like, hey, this is what I went through. And, you know, kind of like, look where we are now. He just kind of started to lose the strike zone was really all that it was. And I think that was just what I wanted to remind him. It's that it's not a stuff thing. His stuff was just as good as it had always been. He he just wasn't throwing as many strikes. And I think it's just a kind of a confidence, a reconfidence booster to just say, hey, Salty, just go out there and throw strikes. Like whatever happens, happens. But just make sure you're throwing strikes because that, that gives you the best chance. After giving up a run in Game 3 and 4 in the NLCS against the Phillies, Saul Frank would go on to get big outs in Game 6 and 7, propelling the Diamondbacks to the World Series and seeing action in three games. But the path to get to this point wasn't always easy. A six-round pick in 2019, the COVID-19 pandemic, and injuries would delay Saul Frank's rise through the ranks. It was a really, really tough time in life. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Um, that people don't know about. Um, it was a tough time, yeah, I'll say that. Uh, but, it, but it made me a better person on the other end, and I came out, I think, um, both better as, as a human being uh, and a baseball player at the same time. After a taste of the show, Saul Frank starting his 2024 season with Reno. His goal? Using this opportunity to be the pitcher he knows he can be. Trying to grow as a person, as a player, um, Super cliche answers. I know it sucks, but uh, it's it's the truth at the end of the day. Just trying to keep a level head. Don't let the highs get too high, lows get too low, and just just trying to use every every day as a learning experience, and you know, trying not to waste any days. A swing and a miss. But those around him know he'll be back up with the snakes sooner than later. I think he he's different for a left-hander to have that that sinker, 
Um, not so much a curveball, but his curveball is, is, is better than most. But I, I think he, he's kind of a different left-hander that um, could, could help for a long time. I saw him in the parking lot when he got sent down before, uh, before he left and, and kind of just reminded him, you're going to be here soon and it's not that big of a deal. I'd much rather be on the October team than the April team. In Reno, Zach Larson, Nevada Sportsnet. In addition to Saul Frank, current Aces outfielder and first baseman Paven Smith played in the Fall Classic, while pitcher Slade Ciccone, infielder Jordan Lawler, and catcher Jose Herrera were on the World Series roster. Coming up on Aces All In, we catch up with Reno's skipper. Our one on one with Blake Lolly is next. Welcome back to Aces All In, I'm Nikki Pika. With a team searching for a return to the Pacific Coast League playoffs, manager Blake Lolly is bearing the storm head on. Last season, Lolly leading the charge as the Aces finished with a franchise best 88 and 62 record while just narrowly missing the postseason. We go back now to our Zach Larson who caught up with the Aces skipper. Here with uh, Aces manager Blake Lolly. Um, Blake, Kind of about a month into the season so far, what what have you thought about um, kind of the season um, so far? You know, I, overall, I think it's been really good. I, I think one of the, the toughest things, you know, at this level is when you first get out to the affiliate, leaving spring training. A lot of guys have uh, just been sent down from the big leagues and, you know, getting 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 that mindset back of, of you know, getting back to the big leagues and, and, and having their time. So. Um, you know, we've had some ups and downs so far, um, but overall we're, we're, we're winning games and uh, the guys are working extremely hard every day, so I, I don't have any complaints. Uh, D-backs have had a lot of injuries so far. It's been kind of like an up and down for as far as sending guys up and down from Arizona. What's that been like kind of dealing with that so far? Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of what we expect. Um, we know that at this level, our job every day, we set out to get these guys ready to go up there and help. So when we get those calls that we're sending guys up, it's a really good thing. Um, it definitely ties your hands on, on some days. I mean, you look at, I think in the last week, we've lost our starting pitcher three times uh, the day of. So we go into a bullpen day. But it also gives uh, those other guys opportunity to kind of jump in there and, and get some innings and, and show what they got so they can be the next person to go up. Is there a player that's kind of impressed you most so far this season? Uh, you know, a lot of them have, really, a lot of them have. But, um, you know, I think um, Albert Almora has, has been just incredible for us. I think, um, you know, it's a guy that was was out due to injury last year. And, um, you know, he, he, he's back playing. And, you know, you talk to him, and I think he, he's just like, he maybe thought he was done there with the injury and he's back and you're seeing the guy that was, you know, center fielder on a World Series team with the Cubs. He can he can hit, he can go get it better than anybody in center. He can run. He's just a complete player. I think he's he's been a big, big part of this team. You guys just missed the playoffs last year. How hungry is your team to get back to that point? I mean, I, I think our goal is our goal is to win games. I mean, um, you know, I I, I never like to make excuses, but we won our division by like 15 games last year, and it was like a weird playoff format why we didn't get in. I mean, we won more games than any team in Aces history and didn't get in, but I think our goal is just to, to win games and see where we are at the end of the year. But I know I know these guys want to get back to the playoffs. I know I want to get back to the playoffs. And, um, you know, ultimately you play to, to win. So um, that's that's our goal. Looking ahead to the next couple months, where do you hope your team kind of improves on um, as we go on here? I think just consistency. You know, I, I think if, if we would have done this interview at the same point last year, I probably, it, we probably would have been in the exact same spot, maybe with a worse record at the, at the time. Um, you know, I, you, you, you want, we have guys with a ton of ability and talent and a ton of major league talent, and our goal is to get it to show off on a day-to-day -day basis, and I think um, right now, at this point in the year, you're, you're seeing it one day and maybe not so much the next. So just getting it to show up every day um, and consistency, and, and we're going to be just fine. The beginning of a new season for a manager means finding what works best. And finding what works best also means catering to the fans. And the fans got a special surprise on April 7th. Making her AAA debut with Reno and learning the ways of being a team bat dog Lambeau took to Greater Nevada Field to help out the players. 
I got the chance to meet up and play fetch with one of the ACE's newest members. Sit. Good. The phenomenon of four-legged teammates are taking the baseball world by storm. Fetch. Meet Lambo, the Reno Aces' newest teammate. She's your typical dog, you know, she like loves everyone. So anytime someone wants to say hi, she's like more than willing to give you a hug. Um, she actually does that on command, so it's kind of cute. Sit Means Sit is a franchise across the United States for dog training. The organization starting in Nevada and eventually reaching over 170 locations. In order to do something as cool as this, you have to get like f uh, corporate approval. Of course, they were on board with it. In fact, uh, Fred Hassan, our, our founder, his bat dog is Finn the Bat Dog for the uh, Las Vegas Aviators. It took Lambo about six months to learn how to be a bat dog. Yeah. I think it's been fantastic. I know she loves it. We got a lot of uh, good reviews when we were walking around with her after the game. I hope she just gets it smoother, a little bit faster, um, and then maybe when that happens and she's really dialed in, then we can start adding tricks into the into the retrieves. The bond between Lambo and her owner going beyond just the commands. What I like most about her and what makes her unique is just um, her willingness to please everyone. You know, if it's fetching a bat, if it's just giving a kid a hug, it doesn't matter. She wants to do it. You can catch Lambo in action all season long on Dog Days. Nikki Pika, Nevada Sportsnet. Coming up next, we connect with hitting coach Travis Denker as the former player shares what helps him be a successful leader of the next line of hitters. SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Hi, Carly, I think. Uh, SpongeBob. Uh, SpongeBob. Oh, that's just not an easy question. Um, courage a cowardly dog. But that, that's different. Um, courage a cowardly dog. Mmm. Zoe 101 was pretty good. That was up there. Boy Meets World. What is this? Guy the. There are two guys. I don't remember the. Two and a half men. <laughs> two and a half men. Yeah, two and a half men. Yeah, I watch that a lot. <laughs> Some fun moments at Media Day with Reno's Ball Club entertaining us with more than just its play. Hey there, friends. Mike Stephenson inside the Aces dugout as Aces All In continues. Here at Greater Nevada Field, run production has rarely been an issue for Reno's club. But for hitting coach Travis Denker, his job is about much more than connecting the bat with the ball. The second-year assistant is charged with building relationships with his hitters, helping them flourish in any circumstance. What's your favorite thing about being a hitting coach? Is it that gratification of giving advice and then seeing it put into action? Yeah, I mean, number one, I'm competitive, and uh, but n number two is like I enjoy people and I enjoy relationships, and I understand that like um, hitters are. Their hitting coaches are very, uh, especially hitting coaches, they're very uh, close to them. And so I think even just more speaking into their lives about real stuff that's going to take place too in the future. So um, and just, just help to, to, to be, you know, a, a mentor or somebody in their life, you know. So You had a long pro career. I mean, did really hitting coach not really pop onto your radar until that last year? Or is that something you had thought about along the way? Yeah, so I had been like giving lessons as I was playing and coaching and running travel teams and stuff. So I had kind of been experiencing a lot of, uh, you know, you know, mentoring with some younger kids. And then as I was finishing out my career, I was like, man, this is something I'd really like to do. And and uh, when I asked Mike Bell at the time, hey, uh, this is something I want to do. He was like, he's like, really? Like, and I'm like, yeah, he's like, are you sure you don't want to keep playing? And I'm like, no, I'm done. Like, I keep getting hurt. I like everything I try to do, like, <laughs> Uh, this not working. I, I just, I really would like to, to coach, you know, just seemed like a good fit. What's your favorite thing about it, being a hitting coach in this environment? Seems pretty advantageous for hitting. I mean, you know, it's funny because, you know, we led, we led hitting in uh, baseball last year, but we weren't like a home run hitting, you know, team. We were at middle of the, bar you know, middle of the road. Uh, but the, what, what was cool even last year is the fact that these guys were hitters. Like they grinded out at bats and that's what you need. You need a team. You need, you need, 13 guys that are opposed to that pitcher every single night. Getting that guy out so we can get the next guy in there and beat up on him. And rather than like just going up there trying to hit a home run every single time, like well, how do we actually win a baseball game? And what we do is we we uh, we work that pitcher, not by taking pitches, but by 
by getting our pitch and taking a good swing with no pressure and um, and just 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 destroying them and and, and really really uh, making them come to us in, in a sense. Do you have a favorite like success story of someone who was really struggling or you really helped them in particular some kind of advice you gave them that made them a much better player? Yeah I mean the, the most recent I can think of right now is just kind of blaze like Blaze right now because he's in the major leagues, just his first home run, and and uh, I would say I would say with him um, was a uh, was a process, right? Like a very simple, uh, in a sense, thinker. Like you couldn't give him too much. Like kind of how I was. So very he related a lot to me. Kind of had to make things really simple, short little uh, thoughts. But from him, it came it came approach first, and then after that, it took us you know, a while to give him a, an intent on what he's actually trying to do with the baseball and then actually now teach him how to hit. And um, so, yeah, you needed, he needed approach, he needed the correct swing, and a lot of times his body was in the wrong position. So uh, there was just a ton of different things that, like, we had to do. And I'm talking from an organizational standpoint. It's like, what do you see here? You know, what do you got here? What do you got here? And so plugging in those pitchers and, 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 and having, you know, in a sense, everybody – give feedback on, hey, what do we see? What are we doing? And finding out like the truth, like what does he handle well, right? And stuff and how do we, how do we make him a, how do we get him to, to get him over that hump so he's a major league, you know, hitter. He's got to face the best of the best, right? And they're going to hit their spots and like, you know, and so I would say he's probably one of them. I'd also say like Barossa, I've been with long as long and he just, you know, he just got back. So um, and we're going to continue to work on him. We're going to continue to work with all these guys, you know, and, and hopefully so that they have a, a lot of success, even at the highest level, you know. So I'm not like removed, but obviously those guys are great, and uh, they've been obviously in, in in this whole process with them as well. Joe Mather, Shorty, and Ease, and uh, Drew Hedman, like one of the best teams uh, when it comes to major league, you know, hitting a hitting group has been awesome. Where you can communicate with them, and they actually want to hear what you have to say, and. Um, so it's been a it's been a cool just um, I would say streamline of information uh, with us. From 2006 to 2017, Denker scattered more than 1,100 hits in over 4,200 at bats at the minor league level. He had nine base knocks in 37 plate appearances at the major league level with the Giants in 2008. Well, I'll tell you what, there is nothing like hearing the crack of the bat, the snap of the mitt, and the organ playing at the ballpark. Next, we bring you some sights and sounds from the first month of Reno season. With a ballpark like this one, it's not unusual to see fans promenading the concourse. With the new additions and the beauty of a baseball field, we wanted to give you a glimpse into the sights and sounds that you could experience right here at Greater Nevada Field. Coming up on Aces All In, we close the season's first installment with Reno's early season accolades, including some notable performances on and off the field. That's next. Welcome back to Aces All In. Mike Stephenson here, putting the spotlight on some of Reno's recent standout players as of April 24th. Our player of the month is catcher Adrian Del Castillo, whose monster April includes belting five home runs, batting 328, and carrying an OPS of over a thousand. On the mound, Christian Mena is our pitcher of the month. Through five total starts, the Aces newbie is 2-0 with an ERA of 3.75. He has struck out 24 batters and is keeping those hitters to a 244 average. 
Our performance of the month goes to third baseman Andres Chaparro, the 24-year-old blasting a pair of home runs, including the game winner against the Salt Lake Bees on April 21st, an effort that also earned him PCL Player of the Week honors. And in other news and notes, this month the Aces welcoming a couple big league veterans to the biggest little city. The Diamondbacks' newest addition and World Series champion Jordan Montgomery beginning his season in Reno, making two starts for the Aces before joining Arizona. Then D-backs closer Paul Seawald making an appearance for the Aces, coming off a strained oblique he suffered in spring training. Slade Ciccone was scheduled to start for the Aces in Salt Lake on Sunday the 21st. Instead, he was called up by the big club pitching in San Francisco against the Giants. Short notice, no problem. Ciccone was fantastic, allowing two runs in six innings of work with just 64 pitches. The last D-backs pitcher to be that efficient was Randy Johnson back in 2007. Plus, we heard from him earlier in the show. Andrew saw Frank getting that call back up with the Snakes on April 23rd after he began his year with the Aces. Aside from the players, how about this honor for Reno's groundskeeper, Leah Withrow, given her own day by the city of Reno? April 10th, 2024, is now known as Leah Withrow Day, paying tribute to her service as the head groundskeeper at Greater Nevada Field. And finally, the Aces longtime owner, Herb Simon, receiving the ultimate praise, voted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. The 89-year-old is the longest tenured owner in NBA history, having purchased the Indiana Pacers in 1983. Needless to say, April was a memorable one for the Reno Aces franchise. That's a wrap on the first edition of Aces All In. Be sure to come check out the team in May. You know, we'll be out here covering every angle of Reno's ball club. In the meantime, a special thanks to our producer, Zach Larson, and our fearless leader behind the camera, Anthony Resnick. For Nikki Pika, I'm Mike Stephenson, and from our entire NSN team, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Aces All In.